I like international friendlies. Uh, I normally don't get excited by international <laughs> friends, but I'm excited by this one. Okay. Yeah, we haven't had a build up like this to a World Cup in a while, especially because the last World Cup we had was in 2014, 2014. and we were horrible at that World Cup. I was there. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know, all, all the incidents that happened. And so here we are qualified for one with an opportunity to announce our presence against a team, a country that we've kind of styled ourselves like for a very long time. You know, the Brazil of Africa. I think it's something we need to move away from because our style is classically different these days. But I understand it's uh, basically a move to talk about our quality. We feel that we are at their level. Ghana playing the number one team in the world now, even though they are not world champions, but by ranking the number one team, a team that has is made up of some of the best names out there, best known names out there. So I can understand the build up where people are like, okay, let's see what this team is made up of. And it's also based on the fact that there are quite a few players who are in really good form. We haven't also had that in a while, Danny, uh-huh. going uh-huh. into a major tournament where we've had quite a few, not a lot, but quite a few players in really, really decent form. And Ghanaians want to see. We also have quite a few exciting new names mm-hmm. that Ghanaians want to see. We might not see them today, perhaps against Nicaragua. But Ghanaians are excited, you know? So you, you can't really blame the feeling of <laughs> like people having this feeling like, okay, it's a friendly, but there's a bit at stake yeah. for people. Okay, and I, I am just very... Those are my initial thoughts on this game today. Danny K, for instance, has told me he doesn't place too much premium on this. He's looking more at the Switzerland game uh, as a okay. tactical markup for okay. the World Cup because it's very close to the World Cup. But for me, this is what I make of today. I don't know what Danny K thinks. Danny, why, why, why aren't you placing a lot on, on today's game? Um, because a lot can change after today. A I lot. Um, there's, what, two months... And then there's a whole international, not necessarily a FIFA international break, but the days leading to the World Cup, quite a number of countries are also playing friendly matches. As you said, um, Henry Asante Trim says Ghana may play an additional friendly um, to the Switzerland one uh, in November. So that could be two friendlies just before the World Cup. And I think f- playing a friendly game a couple of days before the World Cup will give you a proper assessment of where the team is at the moment. As it stands, um, remember, the European seasons are still ongoing. Uh, players, the final squads are not yet out. So, in as much as players are fighting for their places, the more guaranteed members will also not necessarily want to overexert themselves and risk injury at this point in time. So, um, there are a lot of factors that, um, yes, I, it, it's Ghana versus Brazil. It's a big deal. You can, you, it will give you a certain level of. Um, it will open your mind to see some things in both teams and where they are. But I don't think it will be as as important as um, the one just a couple of days to, to the World Cup. Because know that by the time we are facing Switzerland, the 26-man squad would already have been named. The players who will be playing, we know that are certainly going to the World Cup. Mm-hmm. And that will give you a, a proper assessment of the team. As it stands, we don't know who is going. Yes, we know that by injuries, some certain players will mm-hmm. go, but some, we don't yeah, know yet. Some, some will go. The, the entire uh, member of, members of the 26-man squad. So it's interesting. Yes, we are facing the number one team in the world in Brazil. Um, we've not had... I don't think we've had a, such a high-profile friendly like this in, a, in yes, quite a long that time. that is true. And um, the mood around the Black Stars is also, is also very positive. As Godfrey was saying, the new boys coming in, the excitement around them... Um, the players who are on form, like Kudus, you saw Pate come back just a week ago, the sort of football that he played. So, um, Ghanaians are excited to see this. I'm, I'm also excited to see this, but I'm saying I'm not placing too much premium on, okay. this, yeah. on this Brazil game. But, there's, you know, there's, there's also a, a risk factor in here. The f- whole that? few good element around the team so close to the World Cup could be washed away if you don't yeah, get the kind yeah, of result. Yeah. Like, you, you can have a result where, you know, okay, it was close, we played well. And then you can have a result where they just simply blow you away and you're like, Ugh. okay. Uh, yeah. So th- that's the risk. But then it could go either way as well because Brazil also seems to have a good, a few good factor in their camp. Yes. We could also blow them away yes. and they would go like, okay, we, perhaps we need to tighten things up a bit. So either way, there's pressure on, mm-hmm. on both sides. Um, but I, I, I look at the, the, the squad that us put together and that's where I guess the conversations that's where the controversy has been consistent <laughs> yeah. as to who you know who's, who's in the in, squad and who's, who's playing not. uh who uh, how do we play them my my first thoughts i will start on the composition of the squad because a lot otoado did a press it was yesterday otoado did a presser right and 
by and large, people are okay with the squad. Mm-hmm. But of course, we've had people express uh, some concern about maybe the absence of like a Joseph Payne. So who else have they expressed concern? Jeffrey Slop. Jeffrey, Jeffrey Slop. Slop yeah. You know, the thing about nas- my estimation, okay, in my experience as well, the thing about calling up a national squad, if you were to call it based on just form. Coaches would simply run an algorithm, put uh, the, what they need in there, and it will give them the best players. They'll run the same algorithm, and it will name a starting eleven. But it doesn't work like that, does it? But I, it seems like most of the time, our analysis is based on, okay, the, this is what the data says. So this player is better than this player based on this. If we are to look at the data purely, Antoine Semenyo is Ghana's best striker. He should start today. But would you start Antoine Semen not today <laughs> if you were a coach? That's, that's the, the, you, you need to look at those things. Okay, so it's the data matters, yes. But in a national team setup, the composition is such that a lot of angles and a lot of concerns have to be considered in order to put a squad together, that is the larger squad, and then in naming a team. That's one thing we must understand. Mm. So, people are upset by Joseph Painsell not making the squad. He's in incredible form. You you, you, you have to be mad to overlook mm. it. And yesterday, uh, Otado's comments about others are ahead of him triggered a lot of people. They're like, I, I, how, what do you mean by a free Ibani is ahead of him? A free Ibani plays a crowd of folk. What's, that, what's done? To, you know, what's Isaku Fatau done? He yeah. barely gets games. Okay. Uh, with Sporting, sporting club, yeah, yeah. Sporting so, what's he club. doing there? Pencil has scored what six, six goals, I think, four. Four, four assists. He's had 10 goal involvements so far, which is really, really high. But if you look at where Otto also come from, he says he wanted to see him in Japan during the Kirin mm-hmm. Cup. At the time we we're playing the Kirin Cup, Joseph Pencil's form was piss poor. He had not convinced mm-hmm. him. the week prior, he had been given a chance to start against Central African Republic. Mm-hmm. He was horrible in that game. Anybody who watches that game will remember. So, in Otuado's estimation, the Kirin Cup was an opportunity to come for the player to come and show him what he's capable of. Somebody will say, yeah, well, it's a friendly game. He didn't need to come and show you anything. That is what the coach wanted. Perhaps it would have. It was the environment. He wanted to see how he would operate in, in a squad. It's not just about what the output he'll give you on the pitch, but what he can get from him. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, come. The player made excuses for him, like, I have to be somewhere, do this. It's well and good. It's his right to. The coach accepted it and decided that, okay, those who showed up showed me what I wanted to see. So, I'll stick with some of those. Not everybody went to Japan was a pick up. But he simply believes that he saw what he wanted to see from some of those who showed up in Japan. Not necessarily quality on the pitch, but... He wanted to look at other things. Other things, perhaps, that augment Mm -hmm. a squad... It's not just the talent, as I already indicated. So, I guess I can see... And he hasn't really closed the door on pain, so he might make the World Cup squad if this hot streak of his continues. So, as I'm saying, you need to look at all those things. But in terms of what I'm expecting to see on the pitch today, I'm not expecting most of the new boys to start. Okay. Yeah, I'm not expecting most of the new boys to start. I, I, I expect to see Wala Kotin go. I think I will see, we will see Amati Jiku. I don't expect us to see Salisu yet. I think we might see Salisu against Nicaragua. Okay. And I'll explain. I expect to see if Otto is the Otto that I've come to know. He will go with the old boys. You know why? Because against Brazil, you don't want to put together a team that is trying to figure itself out. It's not that kind of game. If you look at the Brazil team, it's a team that is very familiar with itself. Yeah. It might not have... You know, this is not the era of Ronaldinho, Ronaldo, yeah, but, the point, you know, but the point is they have enough quality and they are familiar with each other. Most of them would have played quite a few games, the exception of maybe Rafinha coming in recently. But even that, he's, he's, been, been, around, he's been around in, in team, and around yes, the team yes. for the past year and a half or so. from like 2019. Yes, yes, in and around the squad for a while now. So it's a unit that knows itself. Yeah. Okay, so they could play each other with their eyes closed, whether positively or negatively. They know. Most of the boys, Salisu, this is his first camp. Mm-hmm. Konigsdorfer, first camp. Uh, Inyaki Williams. Williams, first camp. Tariq Lamte, first camp. 
But these are the names Ghanaians are excited about. Yeah. But this is their first camp. They've been in, they've been part of the unit for four days. Would you throw them in the deep end, even in a friendly against Brazil? You may not. It may, they have the quality, but that's the point I'm making about if it was simply a matter of just putting informed players together and putting them on the pitch, you would expect to see them on the pitch. Yeah. But by the time they end up figuring each other out on the pitch, you might be down 5-0. <laughs> you have quality on the pitch, but it's about the figuring out process. So for me, today against Brazil, I'm expecting a lot of the old heads to start and then see gradual introductions for some of the new names in some of the positions and then see full debuts, uh, not full debuts, full competitive appearances for some of them in the game against Nicaragua. So th- that is my expectation for how I expect us to start today. Those are my those are my thoughts. And yes, I I expect to see Andrea you start. I will expect <laughs> to see Jordan are you start. I expect to see the issue is where and I think maybe you might get us to that the Kudus Andrea you, you can yeah, drop yeah. We'll get to that. Who, 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 but for me I expect the old has to start. Dana, do, do you share do you share that opinion that a lot of people should not expect to see a lot of the new guys just yet. They may get a few minutes here and there, but as to making a full start today, you don't do you think it's likely or unlikely? I, I, I agree with Goffred and um, mainly because of a point he made earlier about the fact that um, the team could also easily get a reality check if they go back, if they go into this game and they lose heavily. And I think that's also one thing that the coaches are looking at. In as much as we want to prepare ourselves very well for the World Cup, you don't want to quickly destroy the, the, the goodwill and the, the positive vibes in the camp by going into the Brazil game and getting disgraced. And one of... If there's anything that could, could, could account for that, we'll be thrown in a very inexperienced team. Because we've, we've seen it before. International football is not like club football. Um, in club football, although a player may be playing his competitive debut in the first game of the season, he's probably been in preseason for how many? Like two months before that. Mm-hmm. This is just four days. So yes, the new guys are still figuring themselves out. Um, the integration, and they've not yet gelled yet as a team. And it will be unfair for me to for a head coach to throw them into a friend. If we're playing Nicaragua first, I'll, I'll, I'll not mind at all. Yeah. If we're playing Nicaragua first and then Brazil on Tuesday, they may, they may throw in the new guys in. And then if, based on their performances, throw, yeah, yeah. start them again against Brazil. But it's the other way around. And um, balance is also very important. As I've said, once you, there's one thing talking to a player from a distance and training with them in person and seeing how they do or how they fare with, with, with the, the other components of the squad. So um, I agree with Goffred. I feel like go with the experience heads first. The guys who know and understand the, the job at hand already um, and then slowly integrate the, the rest of the guys. And it's today's, as I said, I'm not placing too much premium on today's game and the result also. It's not about going, into, going against Brazil and beating them. If we beat Brazil 3-0 today, and we go against Switzerland, they will lose 2-0. It's back to square one. And so it's it's about how you play, how you win or how you lose. The, the performance on the pitch is not necessarily the result. So let's give our, ourselves the best possible chance in today's game. And that is for me, by going with the experienced guys first. Um, make it a very balanced setup. Don't go out and be overexcited. Because in our last previous games against Brazil, we've got a red card in each and every one of them. That's the last three. And it, it tells you that when it, there's a tendency to get overexcited, and, yeah. yes, when you, when you face a powerhouse like Brazil, everybody wants to prove. But when you have guys who have been in this situation for too long, they've seen the big stage, they are not faced by Neymar or Vinicius Jr. Or what. In fact, Vinicius Jr. will be looking at party and saying, wow, this guy is bigger than me. That is facts. So, look, that, that, that is the importance of having experience in the team. And I feel like... Um, I, exactly, like Coco Gaffer said, I'll not be surprised if we see the same old starting lineup mm. again in today's game. Maybe after 60 minutes, depending on the results, then you can throw in one or two players. For, for Otwado, what should be, what should be the major thing he takes away from from today's game? Because I have people who will be. People tell me, look, I'll be scandalized if Ghana loses to Brazil. And I tell oh, them, uh, you don't have to be scandalized if Ghana loses. People, take, uh, people, 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 people tend to take our football a bit too serious. <laughs> <laughs> people need to calm down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, a result is a result. You, you, you take what you want from it and then um, you move on from there. But in terms of takeaways yes. for Otuado, I think he'll be, he'll be looking at the team's ability to respond to his tactics. Yeah. Uh, tactical discipline in the World Cup is crucial. 
it's one of the main things that wins World Cups. And it's the reason why very few countries have won the World Cup. Because those teams understand they need to stay disciplined. They might have a very ridiculously talented batch of players, but you would realize that somebody who you know can take on the entire pack in a dribble, passes the ball once, and moves away. During a tournament, you're like, ah, what is this guy doing? He can dribble everybody. Why is he just passing? But to win a tournament, you have to sacrifice aspects of your game. Yeah. And that is what Otoado will be looking at. For if you look at the way he's tried to coach this team, he's tried to, uh, you know, stamp his style on them. The mm. back three, build from the back, try and keep the ball, remain tactically flexible, very hard to break down, down which is essential for him. Brazil is the ultimate test in remaining resolute at this point. They will test you in different ways. There are different things that they can do. So, Otado, I think, will be looking at his team's ability to just stick to instructions, first of all. Can you play according to instructions? Do not deviate from the script simply because... Uh, Danny K made a very interesting point about we getting red cards. And it comes around being, okay, hey, they, they are beating us. They are dribbling us too much. If he's dribbling, let him dribble you. Has he scored? No. That's the most important thing. Are they possessing the ball too much? Possession is 80-20. We are getting embarrassed. Have they scored? No. So those are the mm. kind of things that, as a coach, Otoado will be looking out for because those are the things that separate the boys from the men during the World Cup. We all talk about how France won the last World Cup. They sacrificed team skill, like individual skill, for teamwork. And they got what they wanted. That's people to oh, the Pogba of France is very different from the Pogba at club football. Or this player at club football. <laughs> yes, that is what it is. You know, so you have to be able to sacrifice certain elements of your game. So uh for Otado, I think that will be something that he will look at. Uh how does this team respond to my tactical instruction and how are they able to keep that discipline over the course of a game? Mm. Then we're talking about the feel good factor around the team they're looking good players are looking in form at which point I, 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 you know may, maybe we can answer that after the break but maybe you can just chew on it but at, at which point should Otuado or what should concern him the most is it a heavy score line bad performance that kind of, at which point should he say okay look now we need to revise the notes because plan A is not working and we need to try something in front you just chew on that we'll, I'll, I'll get your thoughts in, in, in a second too close I can feel it something is vibrating inside me I'm celebrating but outside they kill me I'll get any case thoughts in a second but have you registered your self line numbers yet remember the NCA says all sim cards need to be re-registered so voice kill me. and data as well so visit any self line shop near you to register with your Ghana card no registration no service self line better together now GAPCON 2022 is happening from September 28 to 30 at the Kempinski Hotel Gold Coast City in Accra on the theme energy transition in the African petroleum downstream uh, context prospect challenges and the way forward you have great men there uh, Alaji uh, Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia who is the Vice President His Excellency will be there Honorable Minister for Energy Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe will also be there and the conference is putting together regulators and downstream industry sector stakeholders from across the West African sub-region and beyond if you are interested visit gipcon.com gipcon.com and it's been put together by the NPA the Chamber of Bulk Oil Distributors the Ministry of Energy and the African Refiners and Distributors Association See this flag waving, I won't believe you No Cause how far could I be? Now, on the 14th of October, that's the day when the Ghana Club 100 Awards Night is happening. You can visit gipc.gov.gh slash blog to see that form, fill that form, and get your company on that elite list. The de deadline for submission has been extended to September 30. You can call 0244-877-583 or 0544-332086 or send an email to pr at gipc.gov.gh to find out more. So now, if you care about your engine, then you need to be friends with Shell's motor oil. Whatever you drive, whatever the conditions, they have the right motor oil for your vehicle. And they are all specialists and loop bay mechanics are trained to understand your car and guide you on the right way of maintenance. So get your hands on Shell lubricants because they are designed for ultimate engine performance. Um, Danike, let's talk about 
a very interesting debate that seems to have emerged in the last few weeks. Following a very cold start, Mohamed Kudus found good form. He scored for Ajax Sport five, five or six mm-hmm. goals, I believe. Six goals, six goals. Six goals so far. Six across all competitions. We saw him score in subsequent Champions League games. Now, we, we at Ajax, he's playing in a very interesting false nine role, a position that gets him quite close to goal. And some people think that, okay, if that's working, why not replicate the same thing for the Black Stars and have him play in that false nine position or a position that allows him greater access to goal? Whenever the Black Stars play these days, we seem to have um, Andre are you in the mix? People say, okay, now Andre, you should lead the line. He seems to know how to find goals. Some people say it's kudos. People don't want to see Andre you in the national team. Some people, yeah, it's true. It's not yeah. some people. A lot of people don't like to see Andre you in the national team these <laughs> days. Well, we'll get to that so, in a bit. Yeah. So. Danica, you're, 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 look tonight. If if <laughs> Otwado puts out his team, what sh- how should how should he solve that riddle? You know, of these two players, Kudus Mohammed and Andre you who should be tasked with at least. Providing a semblance of a scoring threat through the middle. I always go with, if I was a coach, I always go with the one who's more proven. The one who understands the role better. The fact that Kudus has played there in, what, five games this season, scored six goals, doesn't automatically make him a better goal-getter than Andrea Yu. Mm-hmm. If you're looking at Black Star's form over the past year, Andrea Yu is the top goal scorer for the Black Stars with four goals. Mm-hmm. So that in itself shows that even during his time playing in Qatar, um, they say he's old, they say he's slow, he's still the team's top goal scorer during, um, during this past period. And you see, it's, it's also about systems. The Black Stars hasn't played the same way that Ajax plays. Ajax have certain components around Kudus that allows him to be able to get the goals. It's not just picking somebody's Classic. position and club role and saying, okay, do it in the Black Stars. Okay. Is Kamal Dean going to be playing the same way Big House plays? No. It's um, the midfielders in the... It's Baba. It's Baba Party. going to play the same way that Kenneth Taylor is playing. Party. No. Ghana has our own style. We have our own system. Okay. And I feel like, per what we've seen over the past year, over the past six months with Otwado, how many games? That's uh, six co- uh, games he's played overall. Andrea Yu is better suited to that that position and that role in terms of being the sole provider of our goals okay. than Kudus Mohamed. Okay. Kudus Mohamed played very well against Nigeria in the second leg. Tactically, he was very good. He may not have been flashy. And that's another thing. You see, people tend to analyze football from, from an offensive sense only. <laughs> so if you are an attacker and you are not dribbling if you are not scoring if you are not assisting then it means you, you are bad busy. if you don't look busy then it means you are bad but i always say that judge a player per the game plan and per the instructions that the coach has given the player to do so if a player is on the pitch and a coach says don't cross the center line and the player is consistently crossing the center line and giving him crosses and fans are saying wow he's doing well the coach is likely going to take him off because he's not following instructions and Following instructions, Godfrey said it earlier. That is when it comes to tournament football, it is very important. It's not about who looked the busiest, it's not about who scored the most goals. Because if you remember in the uh, 2018 World Cup, Deschamps gave so much praise to Olivier Giroud in that World Cup, but the guy didn't score a single goal. He led the line the entire World Cup, he didn't score a single goal. But his role brought the best out of Griezmann and Mbappe. His ability to sacrifice himself, drop deep, link up play, not be in a hurry to occupy spaces that were designated for both Mbappe and Griezmann. That is what brought the the best out of the attack. And that is how we need to analyze players. So Giroud is doing exactly what Deschamps wants him to do. So that is 100%. Not what the fans are expecting him to do. Because the fans don't know the game plan. The fans don't know the instructions. But based on how the player is behaving on the pitch and the coaches relationship with the player and response to the player on the pitch you can tell if he's happy or he's not happy so i feel like when it comes to this in the black star setting andrea you understands this thing the coaches are clearly happy with andrea you because coach after coach team after team he's still playing and he's still scoring goals so let's not quickly throw in an experiment just because ajax have done it and it's working 
and he could easily go against us. Even, Kudus even, himself even has been that, successful. Mm -hmm. Even with that, you see, again, if um, with the whole Kudus conundrum, you know, I, I, people think I don't like Kudus. I love <laughs> Kudus. I just think that, um, like Danike said, the past few games that he's played for Ghana, we've been focused overly on his talent on the ball and not focused on other things. I'll tell you something. If you read the analysis of Ajax games that are done in the Dutch press, yeah. not in the not what we chat about on Twitter. Mm -hmm. The people who actually <laughs> go to and watch the games and are paid to analyze Ajax games in the, in in, in Dutch, and we won't read about it because it's in Dutch. But if you care to translate it, they've had concerns. His individual form has been brilliant. They're not happy about his impact on the team. Yeah. And the team will always be essential. Mm-hmm. You can you, you you will have what 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 is the essence of having the greatest stats in the world if the team doesn't do well? And for a team like Ajax, whose principles are built solely on the success of the collective, these things will really worry them. Yes, so they will keep working at it until they solve that problem. It won't become too much of an issue yet. They will keep working at it, but they've started noticing it. That's just what I was trying to say with the point that Danny K is making. Mm -hmm. Danny, please. Yeah, and um, the thing is also, if you are going to change something like this, then it means maybe it's not working. But if you look at the individual co uh, contribution of both Kudus and Andrea Yu in this setup, as it already is, both of them are thriving. Kudus has scored three goals. He's the second joint highest goal scorer for the Black Stars yeah. after, uh, after um, Andrea Yu. Andrea has four, Party and Kudus have three. So, In which period? In the last year. The last year. From season. September last year to September this year. So, clearly is working and if it's working and we've reached where we've reached in qualifying for the World Cup and we are in this position where we are going to face Brazil, I don't think two months to the World Cup um, is a smart time and uh, to, to, to change and ex or start experimenting based on what Ajax have done in the past, what, six games. And if you also want to further analyze, it's just picking from where Goffred um, um, left off. If you push it further, They've lost, they've lost what, their last two games. Ajax have lost their last two games in which Kudus has still scored. Yes. That is when the, those memes started coming up that his inclusion in the starting lineup may be at the detriment of the team's attacking uh, 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 structure. And that's it. So you, you are looking at it from the individual's point of view. But when you look at it as a team collective, there are some people who are not happy with it. So, one, it depends on how you look at it. But I feel like Go with what is working. Go with the trusted, the, the, the trusted person, and the trusted person is also on form for the national team. Mm. That's also something that people need to 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 analyze. In as much as somebody may be doing well in their club team, how well does the person do when they come into the Black Star setting or the national team setting? Mm. Leroy Sani, when he missed out on the 2018 uh, World Cup, Joaquin Love's um, explanation was that when he comes to Germany, he doesn't play as yeah. well as he does for Manchester. I remember City. that. There are remember players that. who sit on the bench in their club sides. When they come to Germany, they do exactly what I want them to do and they thrive. So I'm going to go with those players based on their form for Germany. Because you can't bring your Manchester or your club stats and say based on this, you are better than somebody. No, everybody is doing what they do. But when you come to the national team, it is what happens at the national team that is important. So if we are judging the players by their form in the national team and by how well they execute their roles in the national team, I don't see why we should bench... Andrea you I think this Andrea you think and even his brother is just based on pure emotions people have picked up the, and it, it's understandable you can like who you like you cannot like who you don't like I mean, it's, that's, it's, that's, it's fine that's but when you insist on somebody being dropped when the thing has no tactical or statistical backing that's when it becomes a problem because I always see this Ghanaians have been screaming for John Ayer and Didi Ayu to sit on the bench for how many years is it that, excuse my words, my words, is it that the coaches who coach them at club level and national team level are stupid and they can't see? You say, why is this coach playing in him? Jordan should sit down. Then they sack a coach, a new person comes in, and he's still playing Jordan Ayu. Then they sack the coach, a new person comes in, he's still playing Jordan Ayu. It should tell you so that. So there must be something. There must be something. You see, when you go, when you go deeper into this Jordan Ayu conundrum, and you like the way I've switched quickly from Jordan, uh, Andre to... <laughs> To Jordan are you when you go deeper into this I always say this thing and I'm going to repeat it again judge a player by the instructions in the game plan
because that's what the coaches are looking at the coaches are not looking at the flashy things that fans look out for the coaches are looking at how well this player does for my mm. team and my structure and that's what they judge with jordan if you just briefly if you go back this season the game against um southampton no last season last season um, crystal, crystal palace, palace against palace. southampton they finished that game and this, are, this is what Vieira said. Now, I'm going to read a series of quotes, but there's something that is running through all the quotes. This is Vieira on Jordan after the game against Southampton last season. He said for him to score, he was asked why Jordan isn't scoring mm -hmm. enough goals. And then he said for him to score, we first need to create opportunities for him to score. He says we need to talk about his selflessness because he's sacrificing himself for the team. He's working hard and that is what we need. The goals will come. When you listen to the wording of this thing and how he said it, first of all, he agrees by the opening statement that the team is not creating opportunities for Jordan. So clearly they can't demand goals Clearly they him. can't demand from him. The highlight of this statement is his selflessness and his ability to sacrifice himself for the team. And then adds that the goals will come. So clearly, Vieira is not judging um, Jordan and you by goals. Do you get what I'm saying? Then it comes to Newcastle this season. When, uh, Crystal Palace, when Crystal Palace faced Newcastle this season. This is a space of one year. The same Vieira. He says Jordan was fantastic when he played in midfield because at times he dropped into mm -hmm. midfield. He says he's an intelligent player and always and is always prepared to again sacrifice himself for the team. When, we, when he went centrally, he gave us a good balance. Again, the sacrifice. So he's looking at a player who is being able to adjust and perform very well the tactical instructions that he's been given so it may not look like nice on the public eye but the coach is appreciating what he's doing lastly two more calls this is 2019 2019 july and um, this is uh, roy Hodgson. he says uh, um are you brings an incredible desire work ethic spirit to the team i thought today he did some fantastic things not the least defensively he becomes that extra defender in midfield when you lose the ball again this is an attacker okay. who is not being judged on goals he's being judged on what instructions that are being given to him so sometimes let's cut the coaches some slack they know what they are doing because if a player was bad and a different person came and the different person changed the player, then you can tell that, yes, you were right. But if consistently different coaches come over a long period of time and still play this guy, then it means there's something he's doing that is benefiting the team. So, yeah, 0549 986 You can send in your thoughts. Uh, several people are, I mean, some messages have come in. Black Star stuff. The friendlies tonight is in France and it's all part of the preps for the World Cup. So, Ghana will play uh, tonight against Brazil. They play against Nicaragua on Monday. And then later they play Switzerland. And then I think they'll play one mm. more game, at least pair what Henry Asante Chum yeah. said. Let me let me before, give you some messages that have come in uh, from the bottom. Uh, if you don't mind, let me start from the bottom this time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this one says, Hi, City. Uh, this is from Johnson Momon uh, in Pennsylvania. It says, The game between Brazil and Ghana, some might consider a fight between a lion and a goat. But I think it might be a draw a win for Ghana. Good luck to the Black Stars. Park, we see... Uh, from Poon says, Andrea, you scores in every tournament Ghana has featured, whether we perform well or not. He's the best player Ghana has in this squad, uh, though he sometimes messes up. Uh, and then he ends up with a black sheriff coat that I cannot read on radio. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Kofi Annan says, um, Good morning. I strongly believe that if our players focus on the game and not on the winning bonus, we should either draw with them or... I don't think the winning bonus has become an issue for some time. We are still uh, a bit scarred by 2014. Brazil, you know. Uh, mark my words, this Richie Rice, you guys, uh, Ghana has to get rid of the Wallacott guy. He's not a tested goalkeeper enough. There are lots of question marks about him. Uh, well, there are no certainties, Richie Rice, you see, and that's the point. Um, when it comes to the national team, has he been reliable for the Black Stars since he came in? Yes, that is what the coach will go with. Uh, Zylix Duane in London says he should just use the experienced players from the start. It will help. Uh, we can only wish the Black Stars best of luck. We can only pretend we don't care about whatever happened. But it does get to us. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, this is, I like how government is helping us understand the, the Soja song. Yeah. yeah, so today. But on the Brazil side, though, uh, they, they, they are also looking to do quite a few things uh, with uh, their squad. I think they are still trying to figure out their best defensive shape, Danike, if you, if you ask me. It's an the area of the defensive park. Defensive shape? Yes, I think it's an area of the park that... Uh, 
they can be exposed in and the fact that they tend to load the squad in such a way as to make up for the lack of defense you will get from Neymar and sometimes Vinicius. Um, so you would see maybe Richarlison because Richarlison works really hard. Uh, sometimes doesn't score as many goals as you would want, but because again he he has similar tendencies to Andrea uh, Jordan Ayew uh, uh, in that regard. Worker. He's a he's the he, he's the kind of striker a lot of Ghanaian to say he, he who's got twenty goals he might end up scoring eight or nine. But coaches love him because yeah. he does other things well. You understand? So perhaps that is why he gets in whilst Neymar is in. Uh, Lucas Paqueta, a very hard working offensive midfielder. Mm -hmm. He's he's not your stylish playmaker sort of he's he has the he has the the guile but he has a lot of brawn attached to it then you have casimero uh in there as well everybody knows what casimero does <laughs> i mean so i think they're still trying to figure out their best shape. but one thing when it comes to talking about the squad and how having differences come in and i don't want people to understand maybe um the point we keep making about it's not just about the form but it's also about versatility sometimes it's not club football that we are playing okay so you mentioned the zero situation yesterday i was watching the france austria, austria game and the things zero does from just the tactical perspective if you are not watching for anything other than the tactics it's fascinating okay they could remove him but he just does so many things that keep spenders thinking yeah. like you know, and, and draws and, and space. And notice that he's the most unique player in the French. They don't have any yeah. forward who plays like him. And we, 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 we are still trying to find that. I think that's why we drafted in Benjamin Tete. Of course, he's injured. injured. Uh, now Semenyo, Semenyo also brings a bit of that difference uh, in that lineup. So we'll try and see how most of these boys. And then how does you see? And here's the question that even Danny Kelsey, how we, where does Inaki Williams play uh -huh. in the Black Stars of Ghana? It is blast as not athletic Bilbao. <laughs> yeah, you see the Bilbao setup again. The question that uh, um, uh, Danny K was asking: Inak Williams went six seasons without being benched. How many goals did he score? Not a lot. Yes, but why does he start? He starts up front. Mm -hmm. Okay, because he does certain things well that give the team balance. What the coaches require. They've had different coaches during that time period. So, it works. So, in the Blasters of Ghana, Inaki coming in, where does he play? Is he playing on the right? Is he playing, playing on the left? Is he playing, playing Afro? Because he's not a proven goal scorer. He so doesn't he, have a lot of goals exactly. in his name. So. And at international football level, he does not have the experience. Okay, so sometimes, yeah, it's easy to turn our noses up at some of the players we have and say, but we should value those who have tournament experience. Yeah. Going into a World Cup, it is... Well, if you, it is a team that will run through a lot of the squads who are going to the World Cup, the squads that will do well at the World Cup, especially, they will have certain controversial persons being named to the team. Yeah. And, and, and just to add to what you are saying quickly, the explanations uh, Gareth Southgate gave for Maguire, for Maguire said he, he's the one who took him to a World Cup final. And he's the same person who took him to a Euros final. So remember, he's not talking about what Maguire is doing for mine yeah. instead of the fact that he's sitting on the bench. The tournament experience that he's giving him as a head coach, taking him to a semi-final and a final in their last two majors, it just shows you yeah. why he, he went for a play. And on, the, on this experience level, I'll just wrap this conversation up with a story from 2006. 2006, Ghana had basically a starting eleven that could rival most starting 11s <laughs> in international football. Yeah. Individually, we had four or five players who were world class. Some of parts, we had a really good squad, right? That was there. You would think that, oh, the, but there was a game, that game against Brazil, we lost it. Yeah, three. Right? 3 0. But in the build up to that game, in the tunnel, <laughs> yeah. big, that's so, you see, that's the difference. <laughs> These are players, some of them had seen a club sites and all. But you now, you are now seeing them wearing their yellow and blue, mm -hmm. completely different. Yeah, All right, yeah, people yeah. were shaking. Okay, and until Stephen Appiah left the locker room to get to the tunnel, and he got there, and everybody was like, "Okay, yeah," and he was talking to some of the Brazilian boys. And was like, "Charlie, yeah, what's up?" Joking yeah, with them. was you know, and then you could see immediately the impact 
that had on the rest of the, the rest of the squad those are the little little things mm -hmm. that you club football will not tell you yeah. so club football wise you might be the done but in that tunnel as we are standing there you are shaking nobody knows you the person who has gone to three four tournaments and has seen all these things before he doesn't care he's, he's on face he's on face by so he's the whole come and tell you Charlie, calm, calm down, down. No it is him calming you down that gives you the talented informed player the ability to go out there and perform if you are nervous you can play yeah. no matter how talented you are if you are nervous you can play that is how you build up a squad that's what i'm saying we will, you can never build a national team squad from data other than At that all. you will put 11 robots on the park and you will lose yeah Kiss me. <laughs> a few messages. 0549-986-996. Let, let's go through. Oh, okay. As for me, I'm very scared of Brazil. They should take it easy on us. It's just a friendly. Well, they should also... They should, they're also begging us to take it easy yeah. on them. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, as a, um, with all the analysis of Jordan being praised by his coach, as a striker, his main role is to score goals and not to defend. If he wants to be a midfielder, they should convert him to... But yes, that's the issue. Boss, uh, that's what his coaches see. And that's what they use. So if he wants to, be, he doesn't say he wants to be a midfielder. Mm -hmm. If you're a footballer, you don't say I want to be this. You play where the coach wants you to play, or you don't play. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem with even a lot of our players and why they don't make it in Europe in the first place. Jordan has had a very long EPL career. Oh yeah. Hmm? Consi Swansea, considering Villa, Palace, considering, Palace. and he's yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. And he's, and he's been relegated. Yes. I remember with, so, some yeah, of our more talented two hundred Premier League. Players. Some of our more talented players did are, not play two hundred. Are games. sitting on the benches elsewhere. There's a reason why. You understand? Most of our players will tell you, oh, me, I don't want to play this. So they go and sit somewhere. You are talented, but you're on the bench. You're rotting away. It's what it is. On Jordan, I totally disagree with that. The system they play at Palace is different from what we play here in Ghana. And Jordan is placed in front for goals. And we don't see that often. The midfielders have good numbers than him supreme move from TC. Jordan doesn't play up front for Ghana. He plays out wide. He plays out wide. Uh, the Ayu brothers are good. Jordan is tactically gifted. Uh, whilst they is a leader and inspire people use their father's standards to judge them and demand from them we will win tonight james from teshi okay uh that's uh, one last message one last message and then we go this one says let's also juxtapose what danny said on, on kudus and why he will not favor him up front and what he's saying on jordan using his club coaches review and using that to say he's better place for them. Well, like I said, look, opinions, really. Yeah. <laughs> Eight fifty eight on the city breakfast show. So um as teams are prepping this this weekend is international weekend. Yeah. So there's no league except mm -hmm. the Ghana Premier. And this one update's coming through. Cameroon, full start uh, full strength eleven, just got nailed by Uzbekistan. Yes. Two zero. <laughs> Quick. <laughs> so at this level, so it doesn't matter who you bring. With. If the team can't function well at this level, you, you go chop hot. All right, zero five four nine nine eight six nine nine six. So join the City Sports desk from six p.m. tonight as we build up. There'll be live commentary. Kickoff is at six thirty. The guys will be here. Uh, Danny Cranty will be here. Pichichi will be here. Benjamin Kitty will be here. I'll be here as well. So. Join us for that game. It's Ghana versus Brazil in an international friendly tonight in France. Kickoff is at 6 30.